Imagine for a moment, you're aboard a spacecraft, the thrusters ignite, and you're pushed back into your seat as you accelerate faster than any human has ever gone before. You're on a journey to reach the speed of light, to see the universe in ways we've only dreamed of. As you travel at the speed of light, you will see stars shifting in color due to the Doppler effect, and the universe would contract in the direction of travel. According to Einstein's theory of special relativity, as your speed increases, time for you slows down relative to an observer who is at rest. For astronauts traveling at such high velocities, their journey might feel shorter. If they were to travel to a distant star and back, they might age only a few years while decades or even centuries pass on Earth. From the point of view of people on Earth, the spacecraft would seem to take much longer to reach its destination due to the time dilation experienced by the travelers. As the spacecraft moves further away from Earth, the time delay in communication signals increases, which could lead to complications in mission control and coordination. In essence, if we were able to travel at a significant fraction of the speed of light, our perception of time would be drastically different from that of someone on Earth. This means that, while the journey might seem quick to the travelers, many years could have passed for those they left behind, making interstellar travel a one-way trip through time for the astronauts. The exact effects depend on the speed of the spacecraft. For example, at 1% the speed of light, the effects would be minimal, but as you approach 10% or more, the time dilation becomes more pronounced. The faster you go, the greater the time difference between the traveler and the observer on Earth. This phenomenon isn't just theoretical. It has been confirmed by experiment, such as the Hafel-Keating experiment, where atomic clocks on airplanes showed measurable differences after flying around the Earth at high speeds. Another practical application is the satellites in the GPS system. They are moving at high speeds relative to the Earth, and their onboard clocks experience time dilation. This difference in timekeeping is accounted for in the GPS algorithms, allowing the system to accurately determine locations on Earth. Apart from velocity, gravity also affects time dilation. According to Einstein's general relativity, if you were in a stronger gravitational field, you would indeed age slightly slower compared to someone in a weaker field. This is because your biological processes would be ticking along with the slower passage of time as dictated by the local gravitational field. Time dilation is a real and measurable effect that has profound implications for our understanding of time, space, and gravity. It's one of the many fascinating predictions of Einstein's general relativity that has been experimentally validated. Currently, the fastest man-made object, the Parker Solar Probe, travels at about 0.05% the speed of light. To reach 1% of the speed of light, we'd need to travel at almost 7 million miles per hour, or 11.2 million kilometers per hour. But before we talk about the possibilities of reaching 1% or even 10% of the speed of light, let's first dive in into some of the fascinating details about the Parker Solar Probe. Launched on August 12, 2018, the mission objective primary goal is to revolutionize our understanding of the sun. By studying the solar corona, the probe aims to answer long-standing questions about the mechanisms that heat the corona and accelerate the solar wind. On its closest approach, the probe will venture within 4 million miles or 6.5 million kilometers of the sun's surface, which is more than seven times closer than any previous spacecraft. By 2025, the Parker Solar Probe is expected to travel, at its closest approach, as fast as 430,000 miles per hour, 690,000 kilometers per hour, or 0.064% the speed of light, making it the fastest man-made object ever built. To survive the intense heat and radiation near the sun, the probe is equipped with a 4.5-inch thick carbon composite shield, capable of withstanding temperatures reaching nearly 
2,500 degrees Fahrenheit or 1,377 degrees Celsius. This probe carries four instrument suites to study magnetic fields, plasma, energetic particles, and to capture images of the solar corona and solar wind. On December 14, 2021, NASA announced that the Parker Solar Probe had flown through the sun's upper atmosphere, the corona, and sampled particles and magnetic fields there, marking the first time in history a spacecraft had touched the sun. Now let's see how much energy will be required to achieve these fractional goals of the speed of light. To accelerate a one-ton object to 1% 1 of the speed of light would cost 4.5 petajoules. The energy required is so vast that it is comparable to the energy consumption of 21.6 million people worldwide per day. In other words, more than the entire energy needs per day of the seventh largest city by population in the world, Mexico City. Now let's try to go even faster, accelerating the same one-ton object to 10% of the speed of light would require at least 452.7 petajoules. This is equivalent to about 125.7 terawatt hours when you factor in transportation, electricity, and heating. This is enough energy consumption on average for 2.2 billion people worldwide per day. Just for reference, the International Space Station has a mass of nearly 450 tons. If we were to build a new spacecraft capable of achieving 10% of the speed of light with the same mass as of the ISS, it will require the staggering amount of 203.7 exajoules enough to satisfy the energy needs of 2.7 billion people worldwide per year. The total energy output of the entire planet in 2022 was about 644 exajoules. We are talking about a third of the world energy needs in one year is required to accelerate a spacecraft with the same mass of the International Space Station to 10% of the speed of light. That is really an astronomical number. The ideal spaceship design for such speeds would need to be incredibly efficient and likely rely on technologies we have yet to invent. Concepts like the SpaceX Starship aim to increase travel speed significantly, but even these fall short of the fractional light speed goals. The time it would take to accelerate to these speeds depends on the propulsion technology used. Currently, we don't have the means to propel a craft to even 1% of the speed of light without a theoretical propulsion system or a breakthrough in physics. Here are some of the theoretical propulsion systems scientists are working on. Nuclear propulsion is one of the most promising technologies for achieving high speeds in space travel, potentially allowing us to reach significant fractions of the speed of light. The concept of nuclear pulse propulsion, which was studied under Project Orion in the 1960s, suggests that it might be theoretically possible to reach such speeds. The idea involves using a series of nuclear explosions to propel a spacecraft. According to discussions on the feasibility of such a system, reaching 1% of the speed of light would require a substantial number of nuclear pulses. In a more recent conceptualization, known as the Staircase Project, a probe could potentially be accelerated to 1% of the speed of light using a series of nuclear devices spaced evenly along the probe's trajectory. The probe would be propelled by the successive detonation of these devices, each adding to the craft's velocity. While these concepts are theoretically plausible, there are numerous practical and engineering challenges that need to be addressed. These include the efficiency of nuclear devices, the management of the spacecraft structure under high acceleration, and the overall safety of such operations. As of now, no nuclear propulsion system has been developed to the point where it can achieve 1% of the speed of light, but research and interest in this area continue to grow. Currently, NASA is exploring two types of nuclear propulsion systems, thermal and electric. 
Nuclear thermal propulsion provides high thrust and twice the propellant efficiency of chemical rockets, potentially reducing travel time to Mars and minimizing astronaut exposure to radiation and microgravity. It works by transferring heat from a reactor to a liquid propellant, turning it into gas that expands through a nozzle to provide thrust. Nuclear electric propulsion systems use propellants more efficiently than chemical rockets, but provide a lower amount of thrust. They generate electricity from a reactor to charge gas propellants and push the ions out through a thruster, driving the spacecraft forward. On the other hand, Robert Forward proposed fission sail. This system uses fission fragments to propel a large solar sail-like craft. It's designed to be extremely efficient, providing thrust over long periods, especially useful in regions far from stars where light density is low. Next, we explore gravitational shielding. This hypothetical process involves shielding an object from the influence of a gravitational field, effectively reducing its weight. However, there's no experimental evidence to support this concept, and it's considered to violate the equivalence principle of physics. But the imagination says, what if? On the frontier of the small, we find the nanoelectrokinetic thruster, here, electric fields manipulate charged particles at the nanoscale, creating thrust. This concept is still in the early stages of research and development. Another theoretical propulsion system is antimatter rocket, stands as the pinnacle of potential. Matter meets antimatter, and their annihilation releases pure energy. The challenges are monumental, from production to storage, but the rewards? A thrust like no other. Finally, we cast our gaze back to Earth, where lasers and microwaves could beam energy to spacecraft, propelling them without the need for onboard fuel. Beam-powered propulsion could turn the whole planet into a spaceship's gas station. The speed of light is not just a number. It's the ultimate speed limit of the universe. At approximately 299,792 kilometers per second, or about 186,282 miles per second, it's the speed at which all massless particles and waves, including light itself, travel in a vacuum. As an object with mass accelerates towards the speed of light, its mass effectively becomes infinite, requiring an infinite amount of energy to continue accelerating. In summary, while there are no known laws of physics that prevent us from traveling at any speed below the speed of light, the practical challenges and energy requirements make it a distant prospect with our current technology and understanding of physics. If you have watched this far, thank you. Watch this video next about the challenges of interstellar travel, and I'll see you on the next one.